Hey kids, John here. I wanted to talk a little bit in depth about what is the final set of mechanics that I haven't necessarily talked about up until this point. And that would be the mechanics that's happening inside the mouth. When we're talking about mechanics, we're talking about breath support and breath control. We're talking about our set, the way we set our chops. We're talking about that airstream that's coming out of that set. Small aperture, small airstream, very direct. With great control. And then we're also talking about the things that are happening inside our mouth, which is very much connected to what is on the outside. And what do I mean by this? I talk about jaw position. I think jaw position is very huge because it's a big part of the mechanical motion that's happening. I've talked about using the Earl D. Irons book as a gateway to learning these mechanical motions that are happening inside our mouth and also with what's happening with our jaw and lip. So it's a progressive book that starts very simple. It's teaching you breath control and support, great tone production, and it's also teaching you the mechanics and how is it doing that. So when you move from one note to another on the open horn or, an, or a bugle position, let me explain that. Open horn, that's your first bugle. Second valve, that's a bugle. First valve, that's a bugle. This is a bugle, that's a bugle, that's a bugle, and that's a bugle. What do I mean? Each bugle uses our overtone series. In other words, the notes that sit above the lowest one in that valve position. Open horn is C. There's also pedal C and double pedal C. But when we're talking about on the horn, in the register that the horn plays, not a pedal, then what we're talking about is the overtone series that exists above that bottom note. So, C open B, 2, B flat 1, A 1 and 2, A flat or G sharp 2 and 3, G 1 and 3, and then 1, 2 and 3 is F sharp. So I have a lip flexibility study on my page. I talk about the Irons book. So when you're moving back and forth, there's a motion that's happening here. This is being caused primarily by the jaw. But inside our mouth, something's happening as well. I like to call these vocalizations. I can't tell you exactly where to put your tongue, what shape to make it, to get any particular note. Because it's going to be a little bit different for every person. The sensation of what it feels like can be different for people. This is where our language of description gets very interesting. Trying to describe the things that are happening inside our mouth is very difficult. This is why I like to say that range in of itself is discovery. You have to discover how to do it. So, one of the things that I discovered is how valuable bending exercises can be for discovery of mechanical motion. Okay, it helps teach us centering pitch and, and, and embouchure control and a lot of things. But it's also a very big component of unlocking the mechanics we need to actually change pitch. Bending exercises, what am I talking about? There are plenty of people out there that have different bending exercises. There's books, there's, there's videos about bending notes. So please reference those. What I'm going to do is demonstrate that, and then I'm going to discuss that, how I see it being a possible way to discover the internal mechanics and, and somewhat the external mechanics for what 
you need to do to change notes. So bending exercises. I'm going to take C in the staff and I'm going to slowly bend the note down without moving valves to get to the G below that. You can hear it pop in. You hear that sounds like the, the plane falling out of the sky. And then ba, you hear the note hit. So when that note hits, I actually feel my lip vibrate. Like all of a sudden it excites. The lip, the lower lip excites in a different way. And how do I get down there? I'm going B. Basically like that. With with my lower lip and jaw moving. Very subtle. It's very subtle. But what you feel on the inside is not subtle. Because you have to make that motion. And you do get a, a sensation, a feeling like this is coming down. So the jaw is kind of to get to the lower note, okay? So, lip bending, in my opinion, helps you figure out how to do that. But we don't usually have trouble going down. We have trouble going up. Creating that upper overtone is a little bit more difficult to bend up to than the lower overtone. So going from a G now to a C. you feel like it, there's resistance. It feels like if you're trying to push a, a, a rubber ball or a basketball underwater, there's resistance to it. It's not wanting to go. Where going down, it wants to pop, it wants to pop into that next note. Very easy to do. Going up. There's a weird sensation there. Now, you could actually get the B flat. You can actually get the B flat to sound before the C. That takes greater control. I'm not worried about trying to play a beautiful gliss between the two. What I'm really interested in is in that moment that it pops up there, that moment that that shift happens and the higher note pops into place. And then we can find that note. Oh, there it is. There's something again that happens here that I feel there's a sensation. Okay, so how do we use this exercise to actually help us figure out how to move up and register? This is what I suggest you do. If you're having trouble, say you're, you can play up to the top of the staff, just a G. We're going to take it real easy on ourselves right now. Just a G at the top of the staff. But when you're trying to slur up to it, What's happening is nothing's moving. You, th th that motion has stopped. We don't know what to do to produce that note. We literally just don't know how to play it in that context. But oh, I can play it like that. Ah, here's what you do. So just play that note. If you can play it, ah, there's my G. Great. Oh, perfect. Bend from the G down to the E and pop immediately back up like you're jumping off a trampoline. Let me demonstrate. The faster you're able to do that, the easier it is for you to get to that note. It's, it's just... You, you, your body remembers where that note is and you're just pushing it down and then all of a sudden it pops back up. Look right here. Try and get that very comfortable so you can just Play it, no problem. Okay. 
okay? Now try and smooth it out so it's like a clock. It's more even, like it's ticking. As soon as you're able to do that, you now have control over those two notes, going up and going down. This is not necessarily something that's gonna happen in 30 seconds. It may take a couple days. It might even take a couple weeks for all of this to start burning in as to what your body's doing to go back up. But once you've achieved that, smooth it out. Now I can feel myself activating some, some air from down here to get to that top note. I feel that little push. Now that we can have it go back and forth, let's speed that up. Again, over the course of maybe even two weeks, don't stress on this. Take your time to figure it out. Now, speed it up. It's a motion. It's a motion. There is motion. I know. I know. You've been told, don't move your face. Don't move anything. Okay. If that's working for you, please continue to do that and don't do what I'm recommending. But if it's not working for you, definitely try this. And then as I am moving that faster like a trill, I'm not thinking two different notes. I'm thinking a motion and playing in the middle of the two notes. I put my, my mental set in between the two notes. So that then it's just a motion going back and forth. My air, my set, everything's targeting the dead center of this. This is why you can kind of get the same sensation by just wiggling the horn. Because it's, it's emotion. Whoa. Freaky, right? When you get command of that, you should be able to go. Because you've gone a million times. Okay, so the mechanical motion's there. Now we have to keep going up with that if you're struggling. Like that C doesn't want to come out, but you can play a C. Do the same thing and you're going to go to the B flat. So if you have something that's crossing, say, three notes, aim for the center note, G, B, D. B being the center. It's a motion. You can see it on my face. Okay, it's a motion. You can see the movement. So there's a great video of Doc Severinsen playing MacArthur Park live. And um, it, he does a cadenza that's just absolutely fantastic. And you can see this motion that he's doing in the cadenza. It's not just this physical out, outside what's happening with the jaw. It's happening with our lip. It's happening with our tongue inside. So I recommend using bending notes as discovery. I hope this helps. Take it easy, kids.